Good afternoon friends. My name is Abhay Tripathi. I'm part of Ideas 4G planning team. Today is 3rd October and today we are going to discuss about the USSD process especially when it is a 2G network uh, which is the underlying layer for the 4G network. So in today's presentation we are going to analyze a log file which captures the MO mobile originated USSD scenario. This tool is this tool which you see on your screen is is from Huawei. It's called GenX Probe. This is a drive test tool of Huawei and it can it can show it can log the file as well as it can replay the file. So we are using it for the purposes of replaying the file today. When a user initiate dials a USSD string and press the call button on his mobile the mobile initiates an ESR request. ESR is extended service request. In the extended service request, you will see the service type which will say mobile originating CS fallback, which means that UE is telling the E-Node B that there is a CS fallback which is required for this service. Then E-Node B will, between E-Node B and MS, there will be regular call setup messages like connection request, setup, complete security mode processes, setting off of the second SRB for the NAS signaling, UE capability. Now while all these messages are being handled, are being exchanged between UE and the eNode B, there is also communication which is happening from eNode B to MME and that communication is for, to convey that there is a CS fallback request which has come in. Now after the handshake between the MME and the eNode B, the UE has to be redirected to the 2G layer. Now this configuration has to be in the eNode B that at for this specific cell which TRX or which PCCH should the UE be redirect, uh, redirected to and it's a blind handover type of scenario. So uh, sorry blind redirect type of scenario. So in this case uh, it the frequency of the choice is based on the configuration. So in the RRC connection release, you will find that in the redirect carrier information, there is a uh, GSM uh, network which is there and there is a ERCN which has been defined 633. As soon as UE receives this, it has to now monitor that ARFC and BCC channel and it will find it will try to read all the SIPs messages within that and would then start the process of CM service request, identity request which is for the IMEI and CM service request. In the register message you will see that it is for the USSD. In the operation code you will see process uh, unstructured service request service. So essentially it is for USSD and uh, once the USSD information has been displayed on the handset of the UE, uh, the release would happen and then the, the channel will be released. Now this channel release would be interesting one because now from a 4G, uh, from a 2G the user has to be redirected to 4G. So in the channel release information there should be, you know, and this is where we see that EUtron, uh, the channel release is happening for EUtron and then we are giving a ERFCN which is for the 4G network of ours. As soon as UE receives this uh, channel release information and the uh, and the um, LTE information, it monitor, starts to monitor the BCCH of the uh, channels of those and would then initiate a tracking area update request. Tracking area update is required so that you can do combined T and LA update um, and uh, then TA update accept would happen. So this process will complete you know when the ETA area update accept happens. So just to recap, UE initiates the ESR, then UE is released from the 4G network. This message would contain the redirect information. In this case, it is a 2G network. In the 2G network, the USSD would complete. When the channel release is happening, we are redirecting, we are giving the users the, uh, the frequency at which the EU Tron channel needs to be monitored. As soon as the UE comes into e tron it will then do a TA update and then TA update accept would happen and this will complete the process. Now let's look at the time it has taken to do that. So this is an extract of the messages that we have to, uh, done. 
ESR was raised at t equal to 0, then connection release happened in 120 millisecond, CM service request happened in 2G network which is about 2 seconds later and when the channel release happened after all the USSD it took about 6 seconds or so. So in the 6 seconds the process completed in the GSM network and uh, after this you know within 500 millisecond the UE comes back to 4G and registers in the 4G network, registers in the 4G network. So this is the total time it takes for the USSD message. This completes the topic of today's discussion. Uh, I have mentioned this in the slides here and uh, if there are any queries you can always write to me. Uh, it's abhay.tripathi at idea.adithabirla.com. Thank you very much.